Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Been a little while since uh, we've done anything here, but doesn't mean that interesting things don't keep showing up. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of Japanese World War II rounds, which are pretty much unknown and don't seem to have a lot uh, written about them or even recorded about them. Um, and what we're looking at are some 25 millimeter Japanese experimental rounds, which almost seem unknown. I have been unable to find really any reliable information on them. So I'll just kind of go through with what they are and what I do know about them. And I'm really kind of hoping that the collecting community can kind of fill in some blanks because this is kind of an interesting uh, subset of Japanese World War II ammunition development. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at, this is just a standard Japanese uh, Type 98 20 millimeter round with its packing tube just for scale. Uh, fairly common round, a lot of folks have those if they do collect. Uh, this is a Japanese uh, 25 millimeter by 163 millimeter round. This was a standard Japanese uh, Type 96 anti-aircraft gun round, which is frequently encountered. And then I came across uh, this round, which is very much similar to the uh, Type 96 round, but as you can see, is a bit shorter, and it's got all the standard Japanese marks. It does have kanji on the base. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, it's got a typical Japanese 25 millimeter Type uh, tip and fuse and all that kind of stuff. Nothing that would uh, surprise me to see on a 25 millimeter Japanese round. But again, it is a 25 by 150. And in the same collection, there was this round, which is sort of an abbreviated 25 millimeter. As you can see, typical uh, Japanese construction of the tip there. Um, but it is a 25 by 115 millimeter. So definitely smaller. And as I understand it, the 25 by 115 was actually developed as an experimental uh, fighter round, which was going to be for a fighter aircraft cannon. And that was the HO-51, I believe, which was essentially a scaled up uh, model of the M250 caliber American M250 caliber machine gun. And there are pictures of this gun uh, existent. Uh, only a couple were made, maybe even one or two were made. And uh, they were just used by the Japanese sort of as a, as a test bed. And this is one of the rounds that would have gone to that. And it was an outgrowth of what was called the H05, which was a 20 millimeter cannon. And uh, the Japanese pretty quickly decided that 25 millimeter would give a little bit more oomph. So they went to the 25 millimeter. They obviously, for whatever reason, were not happy with the 25 by 115. So they improved into the 25 by 150, which is this guy here. As you can see, very standard. Uh, Japanese marks that you would expect on a typical Japanese round. Uh, obviously, the exact same kind of construction. Uh, that's This is a standard uh, 25 by 163, and this is the 25 by 150. And again, that was called the HO-52 round, and the Japanese weren't thrilled with that either so they decided to actually go for a 30 millimeter round and they developed a 30 millimeter which actually saw as i understand extremely limited combat use and was going to actually be uh, developed and fielded on a proposed japanese uh, jet fighter which never made it into production and so the Japanese kind of uh, abandoned the 25 millimeter and went to the 30 millimeter because you do get more bang for your buck, essentially. Um, these two rounds were found together. Um, their story of where they came from, I really don't know. I will tell you that they obviously have been demilled. And they have these really interesting grooves on the base here. Uh, this one has it, and so does this one. 
These are identical. I'm not sure if that was for a display or if it was for part of the demilling process, that seems kind of unusual, or if it was perhaps some way they were linked because these were actually fed from a linked belt, as I understand it, into the, into the Japanese test guns. The only uh, picture I could find of one of the guns is from the, I believe, the British Ministry of Defense, their pattern room, and it's just an old black and white picture. I don't know the status of the gun now or where it may be or if any others exist in any museums. Again, I'm kind of hoping that somebody might be able to fill me in on that. But we'll take a look at the base of these. As you can see, typical Japanese 25 millimeter type base. Uh, this one looks to have been fired and then demilled with two holes just to show it's been demilled. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but there are the standard Japanese IJN anchor marks on these. And this one, again, same thing, two little divots out and then two holes to show it's been demilled. And just for reference, we'll take a look at a 163 round standard Japanese markings. This one's got a little bit more, um, you know, some obviously the head stamps will vary on these. Uh, I could go through and show you a lot of different variants on on 163s, um, depending when they were made, who made them, where they were bound, all kinds of good things. But just uh, kind of wanted to get out there that, that these rounds do exist. Uh, obviously, if you have one of these, I would love to hear about where you got it, uh, what you know about it, anything like that. And uh, obviously anything about the test beds that they were used on, whatever became of the guns, where certain surviving examples may be. I uh, just wanted to get this out there to the collecting community and kind of uh, call for help. So thanks for watching and always remember to like and subscribe. We'll always be doing some more interesting things as they come along. Thanks for watching.